Hey you guys, Double NKH here again. Welcome back to the second channel where we do a little bit of everything, including a lot of e-bike reviews. And so we're out here in Arizona, pulled off the highway to enjoy a nice sunset, the cotton fields. I say sunset as I'm pointing away from the sunset, but that's over there. I don't think the, the GoPro does it much justice. And on this trip, we have the Engway E26 that I've been using a little bit. And I'm gonna give you a fast paced review video on it. Well, let's go over a few specs on this. 26 inch by four fat tires. Comes with aluminum rear and front fenders. I've had the front off right now because it was easier to store in the van. With that, you get a integrated tail light and headlight on there. Hydraulic front forks with a preload on the left and a lockout on the right. Hydraulic front and rear disc brakes. A Shimano seven speed. Nice handy bell on there. I've actually never seen this style before. The battery, 48 volts at 16 amp hours, a thousand watt peak brushless hub motor, and they advertise a max range of 87 miles if you're pedaling. But so that's, that's very relative, like how hard are you pedaling? But we'll run this full electric in the video. And usually we see around half of that. Seat comes with a nice cargo rack that shows 25 kilograms max load. This bike is advertised to weigh 76 pounds and has a payload of 330 pounds. I'm gonna have to take a quick break because here comes a freight train. And you know we like freight trains here at Double NKH. Alright, a couple other things to touch on the bike. The seat is at its max height right now. It does have one of those built-in shocks. And with me being six foot three, not six foot two, I know I used to be in earlier videos, but I've grown, been drinking my milk. Uh, that is what it looks like. You know, I can actually touch my toes. Though I, I suppose it could stand to go higher because you see with my leg all the way down, that's what we're looking like sitting on the seat. I'm not really getting the full stroke out. The stem up here is fully adjustable too. You can bring it, you can see I have it all the way kind of at the, the highest point. You can see that, but uh, an Allen, if you loose an Allen, you can fold this down you know, if you want the, the bars lower. Now, I didn't show you guys unboxing this or assembling it, and that's because it is super easy to do. It's as simple as putting the front wheel on, bolt the fender on. They do have a video, so I'll drop that down below in case you want to check out Angway's video on assembly. And I'm just noticing we do have two sets of screws for putting water bottles or accessories under there, like that. And to fire this unit up, you simply long press right here, and that'll turn the display on and then you, know, you see right now it's on trip 2.7 miles uh, if you use this button that actually turns the lights on i thought that cycled through but there's a glance at your headlight and very bright tail light along with one of the best brake lights i think i've ever seen on an e-bike very bright to cycle through from the trip use the button higher up and there's your odometer max speed average speed of course for your power settings right now on zero it doesn't have anything i don't think the twist throttle works on zero either nope so you go up to one and now you have that twist throttle action uh, or of course your your pedal assist power assist whatever you want to say and uh, you go all the way up to five they do advertise a max speed of 28 mile an hour which i verified the other night actually a little bit more so i think we'll do a ride in the morning since uh, it is past sunset now and i'll see you guys then morning 6 30 a.m and the sun has just peaked over there let's go hit a, hit a ride see if we can run out the full range on this i'll just reset the trip and the way you do that is hold this upper side button and the negative button and then i'm using this ulysses gps i see a lot of you guys uh, ask which app i'm using this is on android we're going to run around power five the whole time so here's a look at how long it takes for the power to kick in when you start pedaling it takes about a solid second and then it's one of those kind of on off switches it doesn't have a torque sensor uh, rides nice and straight no hands look at that good geometry on the bike if i wobble it just straightens itself right out we started this ride in goodyear arizona and i'm going to try to just get to the outskirts of town there's a lot of traffic this morning but also do a little bit of you know exploration see what we can find I was looking on the map, right behind this shopping center, the Aqua Fria River, if I said that right, 
and I don't know if it's railroad tracks or some kind of dirt path, but it looked kind of cool. Ah, right here. Good off-road test. A little hill climb. And this is amazing. What the nice concrete. Look at that. That's the, the dirt path I'm talking about, but I don't know what the scoop is. But this is good riding. <laughs> oh man. So Let's show you top speed here real quick. It's got a lot of pickup off the line and we're showing 23 miles an hour. That's using throttle only. And I don't know if you can see it, but over on GPS, showing 23. However, uh, if I start pedaling, more power kicks in. If you let go of that throttle and you start pedaling, this thing really gets up. Uh, I'm still accelerating right now. A little, a little bit bumpy to be, to be going this fast up here, but I'm getting up 30 mile an hour, no problem. Uh, when I was riding it the other day, I actually hit 33 while pedaling, and it was it was smooth sailing. These guys are over here putting together uh, steel trusses and walls, it looks like, for inside of this warehouse. Kind of just prefabbing them. And a ton of generators over there, wow. Glad I didn't take the, the lower road because it's soupy sand down there. But yeah, this is the river. So I guess we'd be up on the, the levee, we'd call it. And geez, I don't I don't see any no trespassing signs around here, but this seems like a really awesome uh, bike riding path. And down there it'd be we'd be sucking all our juice up. I'll have to ride down there at some point too though. Comes to the end of the line here. Be awesome to see a train come over this little bridge. And man, just the cool weather out here in the morning. This is unbelievable. I guess we'll run on down into the river basin here since uh, there's a ton of trails down here. And I think the, it might be no trust, but there's more like you don't want to run into the wrong person down here. But pretty early morning daylight. This is awesome. Looks like they do patrol this because I see a lot of fresh tracks. Doing 28 mile an hour and I'm just rotating the pedals. I'm barely even inputting. If I, if I put some of my power in, I can get this up above 30. True GPS miles per hour. So this bike, a lot of power, feels really good. This is way better than sitting in traffic. Just fresh, clean air, feels nice. What else I like is being in the seventh gear, you know, doing that 28. I'm not rotating my legs all that fast. I can still use my power and keep us trucking right along. But what I will tell you is that 28 mile an hour, you know, you, you do affect the range quite a bit. I'll be shocked if this bike gets 25, 30 miles at that speed based on my experience. And now we've gotten into a little bit more of this soupy sand, which is you know, really draining on the battery, uh, but it's motoring through it, no problem at all. Looks like somebody dumped a boat over here. Or maybe it's from when the river had water. Yeah, look at this old thing. Michael's dream. Got an old Mer Cruiser on there. It's actually a decent boat. Look at that swing deck. Nice and sturdy. Comes with life vest. It sucks people just leave their trash out here like this, you know? And uh, it's like, it's one thing if you're living out here, but don't leave all your trash. It's terrible. That's what ruins it for, for anybody else wanting to do that and camp out, you know? And another boat. This one's a little bit worse shape. Somebody cut the whole transom out of it. Does have one of those cleats on the front that you can tie off from both sides. I'll oh, check that out. It has a rod that goes all the way down, threaded rod down in there instead of being bolted right to the deck. That's kind of cool. I like this style. You can go both ways, you know, instead of having a cleat on either side. Now, this is when you really need the fat tires if you're going to be riding any kind of sand like this. I mean, it, you can just float right through this stuff. And full suspension would be nice, but this hardtail's handling it all just fine. Get 
back over toward the main road at some point. We gotta get off of this sand. Can't even pedal through this spot. We are just sinking. And a better look at this sand. I mean, it's just you're riding on the beach. Uh, we're back on some smooth stuff. Coming into kind of like the, the farming district. There's some water. And I know you guys probably can't see this map too much, but we caught the Agua Fria River all the way up here, rode it all down, and it looks like it dumps into the Gila River, or Gila River, however you like to pronounce that. And uh, right next to it, where my blue dot is, is all these water basins, and I guess they probably pump out of that river, store it here, and use it for their irrigation. And all that sand motoring brought us down to three bars at only six miles. All right, let's stay on smooth stuff here on out. And this is a look at one of the canals. Oh, is this all fish jump? Something. Oh, look at that. Now this thing we're standing on is pretty bouncy. Ooh. And now crossing over the Gila River, you can see that's how much there is. It's it's pretty dry. Now I've made it over to the Estrella Mountains, I think it's called. You got the Estrella Mountain Regional Park right over there, but there's an entrance fee. You got a golf course. Really nice part of town. Uh, but I think we're gonna start heading back because we're at two bars, 8.7 miles. I'll start heading in that direction anyway. And I do like it out here. They have bike lanes kind of everywhere. Uh, there's always, always an up shoulder. Of course, we're gonna take a different route back, running along the Goodyear Phoenix Airport backside of it. And uh, man, I'd love to see what this river looks like during a, a big flood. It's so darn wide. As we get back into town, we're actually passing the Cincinnati Reds spring training field right here. Cincinnati Reds player development complex. Uh, any of you baseball fans out there probably have heard of this place or recognize it. Like a little paradise in the desert. All this green grass. Arriba! <laughs> That would be so fun to ride up the ice truck. But what a jerk move it would have been too. So that's looking back over at the mountains where we just were. And we're on the backside of Goodyear Phoenix Airport where they got all these big old jets. Look like maybe 737s, I'm not sure, but I think they're all just parted out. Yeah, they're all just kind of parked here because I haven't seen any large planes come in or out. So maybe they, they land here and then this is kind of a, a boneyard for them, it looks like. See, now this road's not ideal. We don't, uh, we don't have a good bike lane, but luckily not much traffic. Yeah, let's go back behind this warehouse a little bit. I think we saw plenty of range. We can get closer to the jets. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. We get right up on them. I love exploring around. You never know what you're gonna run into. The Land of Legends, Royal Flight. I know they're just regular old airplanes, but kind of need to see them sitting here getting parted out. You can imagine how much all this is worth. I mean, when you need, need something for one and sitting right here, whew. yeah. Once I got back to the motel area with time to spare, Riding out the rest of it along this levee section I didn't do yet. It's probably my favorite part of the whole ride, to be honest. Just don't dive off to the right. Woo! Wouldn't be good. We just rolled over to 20 miles and still holding that one bar real strong, getting a lot of range off the last one. Uh, over on the GPS, showing 19.5 miles. So that is definitely accurate within a reasonable amount. And still holding full power too. So I'm gonna keep trucking along and I'll let you know what we end up at. This guy's got a sweet fox body. Nice, nice fox body, man. What can you got in there? 303? Alright, sounds good. Love it. 
Okay. All right. We have made it back in 24.4 miles. Still got one bar, haven't made it down to zero bars. Usually these will go uh, zero bars flashing and you still get a mile or two out of it. So unfortunately I ran out of time and I won't be able to run the whole distance, but I'm sure it would have been around eh, 26, 27 miles. I'm 180 pounds. I think that's a pretty decent range considering we were barreling through you know, deep sand, going up some hill climbs and riding it really hard. I think if you were, you had it on pedal assist mode and you were actually uh, putting your own power into it, riding it on speed two or three, I think you get a lot more mileage out of it. Of course, it's gonna depend on your terrain, and how many hills, your weight, your height, all that kind of stuff. And as far as complaints go, the only ones I could really think of is maybe the seat height be a little bit, uh, post a little bit longer, so in case you're tall, but you can always switch that out if you had to. You know, they sell other seat posts, not a big deal. The battery being black, I don't know if that matches so well. It'd be cool if it was color matched, but being black is fine too. I mean, that way uh, you don't have to worry if you get another battery, getting it color matched. No, uh, that's a personal preference. I really, really liked the bell. That's uh, actually one of my favorite features on this bike, as silly as that sounds. And uh, the other doinker little ones, they always break, or worse yet, if the bike doesn't come with a bell, you know? The front fender, again, is not on there, but we, we do have those. All these cables, they go into the frame. It has a little grommet right there. And uh, you can see I got the tripod tucked in here. The, the cable and cell phone holder don't come with it. These grips are super comfortable with the pad that comes off, extended. But you can see this one started kind of shooting out. And if you spin them, you know, I suppose those could use a little glue. Didn't have any problems shifting through the seven gears. And hopefully I covered kind of everything on here. I'm gonna, definitely gonna give it a thumbs up if this is the style bike you're looking for. I think this was the gem blue. They do have three colors. I will drop a link to it down below in case you wanna check out pricing. I usually don't mention what the pricing is in the video because a lot of time it changes. Uh, they start at one thing or it'll go on sale. Uh, so there will be a link in case you wanna check all that out. Now on this trip, we had planned to put some, some pegs on and a piece of foam back here for Jen to be able to ride on the back, but just didn't get enough opportunities to use it since uh, we were editing a bunch and, uh, and going down to the duct tape drags and such. But this rack, she was sitting on it for a little bit without the pegs, and I mean, very, very sturdy. Like, I'm 180 and I'm putting basically all my force on there. Yeah, look, I mean, if I could balance and there's just no flex, it's, it's causing the, the front of the bike to do a wheelie. So very, very sturdy rack. So I'm gonna be done rambling now. I hope this video has helped you out if you're looking at e-bikes and if this one was on the, your list of potential bikes to buy and it's your style, then check it out. I had really no complaints except for what I mentioned. So thanks very much guys for tuning in. I think this is gonna be the last e-bike video for a while, maybe for the season. I know I did a ton this summer and uh, came like e-bike guru, right? But get back to wrenching and doing some other stuff. So see you over on the main channel very soon. Part two on the van coming out and the Fox Body Mustang. I don't know, that's gonna be weird. Those two videos are kind of mixed up together, but we'll figure it out. I thank you guys very, very much. Thanks for the support. See you soon. No nonsense, no how. Two.